everyone. Before this video begins, I would like to address something. Last Thursday, December 16, the Philippines was hit by its 15th storm of the year and the strongest typhoon of 2021. The typhoon made landfall at 1.30 local time in Shergao Islands in the southeastern Philippines. The typhoon was locally named Odette, and it strengthened from a Category 1 to a Category 5 in less than one day, making it difficult for people to prepare for the arrival of the storm or to evacuate. More than 3,000 people evacuated ahead of the landfall, and millions were affected by it. Houses were blown apart, cities and infrastructures were affected, and lots of people lost their livelihoods, all in the span of two days. The regions most affected by it, the typhoon are regions uh, 4B, 5, 6, 7, 8, 10, 11, Imaropa, BARMM, and Caraga. It's a happy feeling to see my countrymen affected, especially in this holiday season. People are losing signal, it's hard for people to find food and water, there's barely any electricity, and most people have no homes to turn to. Here on the screen right now are a list of donations and emergency hotlines. I'm encouraging everyone to spare a little or as much money as they can to give aid to our fellow Filipinos. If you're not able to, that's okay. Sharing and boosting these can go a long way and would hopefully reach people with the capabilities to do so. I will also link to a more in-depth list of organizations in the description down below courtesy of Lightroom Presets Manila and Instagram. Remember to double check these organizations for transparency reports and make sure your money is safely going to the people and cities in need. Sadly, a lot of people are using this opportunity to scam those that just want to help where they can. Us here in Luzon feel to realize how fortunate we are to still celebrate the holidays in our homes when others are not so lucky. So in the spirit of the holidays, give where you can, spread the word, and let's help each other out. That's all, now on to the video. What do you guys prefer the most? Ambient lighting, which is just, you know, what I have going on right here. Or, are you the kind of monster that prefers this? Do you prefer this? I guess it all boils down to like preferences. But still. Um, an hour or so later, my head hurts. I have a headache, but I managed to fix up a lot of stuff. I'm just gonna update when I'm done, I guess, with stuff. I, I don't have the energy to like keep on constantly filming. It's not in me right now. So, yeah. Wait, I thought I should like clarify the reason why I've uh, decided to clean my room or like at least fix up this area is because 
I was just making TikToks. And then now, now everyone is saying, room tour please, room tour please. The layout's all pretty, but it's a mess and I just got the motivation to not show how chaotic it is here. It's a big room, it's a big room, it's hard to keep track of everything. This room was originally made for like four people and now everyone's wanting a room tour. Not everyone, but like more people than I thought. Because, you know, in that TikTok account, I made just for fun when I realized there was no traction at all. So I was like, okay, I'm just gonna dump anything I want to dump here. I have the freedom to do so. So I did not expect this exact video of me showing my room or like a part, a chunk of it to catch people's eye. I don't know, we'll see we'll see how it pans out in the morning. Good morning. I ended up sleeping. Turns out the coffee did not keep me up at night. It absolutely made me sleepier. Even more exhausted. Anyways. Time check, it's currently 5 p.m. You see that? It's outdated. It says October 12th, it's already December. Also, one thing about my room is this painting I made when I was still in my high key phase at late late 2020. I never got to finish I never got to finish Canada because I got lazy. Wait, yeah. It's just stuck there until I get the motivation and the materials to start painting again. We have a pretty boy over here, this chick magnet, and this precious boy. I never got to finish. I'm so sorry, Kenma. I, I, have, I have failed. I have failed you. I have failed my friends who are Kenma Sims. I just really had a bad interaction. I was trying to fix something and it didn't it didn't end up well. Or like the person I was talking to um I wasn't able to communicate very well with them. I wasn't able to put my point across because they thought I was trying to start a fight. I was just you know I was just trying to have a reasonable conversation with them. But anyway because of that, I kind of feel down. I don't want to do anything just yet. I think that's one problem most people have is that they force themselves to work even though they're not feeling well because, you know, they have to. For me, uh, having to follow that is really unhealthy. Especially with how I feel that my mental health is very unstable lately. And so I'm trying to make sure I don't burn myself out. Is it called being an excuse to be lazy? I don't know. I mean, I'm still gonna do like mundane stuff. I just won't be working until I feel better. 
people might say that I'm just being over dramatic. I'm not. If people say that to you, don't listen to them. If you're able to assess yourself and what you're feeling and what you're doing, rationalize your behavior and find out that no, you're not overreacting. You're just really not feeling well. Not feel. You're really just. You're really just in a state of mind where working seems like a very taxing thing to do. And then it starts to break you. Don't listen to anyone who says that you're being overdramatic. Be kind to yourself. That's something a lot of people tend to forget. That's something I tend to forget. And I'm here to remind you about it. The days are just starting to like blur. So I don't know what day it is today. I, I have no idea what I did yesterday and the day before that. I I am losing track of time. I don't know why the days just start to a point where I can't even remember which which event was yesterday. What did I do for the last two days? Have I been actually doing anything? Did time actually pass? It's like after that hangout. My brain just went, okay, I can't, I can't, I, I don't have anywhere else I need to be, so I can forget everything, so I can just ignore time. I also found out that a toxic trait I have is to just open my laptop in hopes of like maybe, maybe I can finally start doing work, maybe I can, you know, having to open the laptop can make me gain that motivation to do my backlogs, but no, I just end up staring to their school from my desktop background. I guess now is a good time to introduce you to my cats. This is Peppa. Oh my god. Say hi. <laughs> She's so derpy. She isn't normally like this. She has grown into a really, really naughty cat who doesn't want to be held. When she was a little kitten, she loved cuddles like all the time. But now, whenever she does go near you, she doesn't want to snuggle. She instantly wants to attack your hair. You want it? Ta-da! She was a little street cat, street kitten. And I picked her up. Uh, so here's the story. It, we were at school and me and my friends went out to lunch. We were on our way back to school when we found this tiny, small black kitten that, uh, that could fit in the palm of your hand. And I was like, I want to kidnap it. And then uh, two years later, she's now this big chunk that listens to no one. I don't know why we stuck with the name Peppa, um, but it's what she's familiar with, so it's her name now. I guess you can say this is like uh, when a street cat becomes a spoiled house cat. She's a mother of four uh, kittens who I'm gonna introduce to you next. And she hates them. I don't know why. I don't know what happened. Um, one day she just instantly hates seeing them. She's a very introverted cat. Introverted to the point that any cat she sees, she wants to start a fight with. Okay, first kitten. We have Boba. Her name is Boba. Boba Pearl. <laughs> She's so cute. She likes to be carried like this. How can I tell the difference between them? Um, Boba here barely has any white fur on her because the kittens, I don't know where they got it from, probably their father. I don't know who their father is. They have like patches of white fur on their, on their chest or belly and Boba has none. And her meow 
is yeah one time when they were little they, when they were just small little kittens boba went missing for a whole week and we thought we lost her until she just started showing up randomly one day and we're like oh she's back where did she go i don't know what you like gets very clingy. She likes to lick people. That's her thing. She, she likes to lick them. Their feet, their hands. I don't know what's in her head why she wants to do that. Maybe she just wants to be affectionate. Maybe she likes the taste of human skin. I don't know. Over here we have Neko. She's a chatterbox. I ended up just naming her Neko, which just means cat in Japanese, because what? Because in this game I'm playing called Genshin Impact. A new region Inazuma just came out, and then um, new islands were being released here and there. And then in this one island, there was like a place dedicated to cats. And it had a priestess, which is just like a black cat named Neko. That was also the time when um, they were born, like one week old kittens. And so I just decided, hey, your name now is Neko because of this cat. So her, na her name is just Cat. She's just a cat. She's the closest to her mother, her meows, her behavior. How do we identify her? Of course, her meow. You could tell. Her meow and Boba's meow is very different. And she has this patch of white fur here under her belly. She's the, the chatterbox among the kittens. Say bye bye. Up next, we have we have Cookie. Cookie. She's the kitten who I don't want to carry because the last two times that I carried her, let's say there was an accident. She's also the most affectionate one of them. She's like a combination of Boba and Neko. I gave her like this collar when she was a kitten and it was just made of yarn and she grew out of it. But it's still around her neck and it formed this like really cool pattern that look, kind of looks like her fur. This one over here. That's her old yarn collar. She's just been sporting it while she's growing up. It's so cute. She was never able to take it off. She also has the most white patches on her under her belly. There we go. There's no backstory to her name i just named her cookie i just think it's sweet because you know she's really sweet and last but not least we have tofu let's just say the printer ran out of ink that's why she came out like this compared to her sisters ah uh, the story behind her name was that dot um initially had a kitten before these four just one, and I named her Tofu. And sadly, after like two weeks, she died. But that's okay because we have these four little children, and they're perfectly healthy. They've grown up to be quite the litter, I would say. And this little guy was the closest to, to, to Tofu. She looked just like Tofu. They had the same color pattern. And so, I named her Tofu number two, but that would, that name wouldn't stick, so I just named her Tofu. And she's grown to love that name, actually. She is the smallest out of the four, and the lightest and the sweetest. She's the youngest. She likes people's attention. She gets scared of strangers, of course, but when, they, when she grows accustomed to them, she would let them carry her. Baby. She would let them baby her. Her meow is also so cute and so different. And 
And there you guys have it. Those are all my cats. Oh wait, no, there's one more, but I'm gonna introduce you to her next time because she doesn't come here inside. She has her own little place outside and she's perfectly fine over there. She's more of like an adopted kitten, but still pretty close to these four.